And as horrible as that sounds, I have to be honest with you so that your process can be easier. Wow, we're getting very honest on here, okay? Hey y'all, it's Jayla, AKA Jay Chanelli on the internet. Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join all 21,000 of us over here. In my last video, we discussed some negative aspects of the natural hair community and the natural hair movement. If you missed that video, I highly suggest you go ahead and watch it. So I'll link it up above and in the description box below for you. But today we're gonna be on the positive side. Today I wanna talk about how to actually love your natural hair if you are someone in this community, if you are someone who joined the movement and you have not yet achieved that level of self-love. So again, if you are interested in learning the steps that I took to love my natural hair, to allow it to flourish in that, go ahead and keep on watching. Now, let me talk you through some of the things that I had to come to terms with as a type four natural hair girl really trying to learn how to love the hair that grew out of her head. There were some things I had to start doing, some things I had to stop doing, okay? And some things I had to find a little balance. First things first, release all expectations that you're putting on yourself about what your natural hair is going to look like. And let me tell you why. When you build expectations, you're also building the opportunity to be disappointed if you don't meet your expectations. And you should never be disappointed by who you truly are, okay? So let me go ahead and give you a little bit of background on the expectations that I had built for myself going natural and why I had to essentially get over disappointment when I saw what my natural hair really looked like. My mom's side of the family, particularly type three natural hair all across the board. My mom has type three natural hair. My aunties type three natural hair. My cousins type three natural hair. Seeing this, I was inadvertently setting an expectation for what I thought my natural hair was going to look like. And when I finally did cut it off and I realized that you are not type three like those other people in your family, baby, lo and behold, she's a type four shout. There was a level of disappointment when I found out that I did not have type three hair. And as horrible as that sounds, I have to be honest with you so that your process can be easier. I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes you gotta fake it until you make it. And y'all have heard Rihanna say this. I'll insert the clip here. What do you do on those days that you don't feel that confident or fearless or powerful like you did out there? Uh, pretend. Fake it? Yeah. Until we make it? I mean, why not? Some days you're not gonna feel like that girl. Yes, you may not like it, but you're gonna pretend like you like it today, okay? You're gonna train yourself, you're gonna rewire your brain to like what you see. You may not wanna show these people your twist out because you don't like the way it turned out, but you finna show this twist out today and dare somebody to say something about it. I'm being real with y'all. This is something that literally helped me. Once you fake it enough, y'all, you will really start to believe it. Doing the steps and talking the talk, you're eventually gonna walk the walk. I don't know how it happens. I don't know the psychology of it. There's so many times I had to force myself in uncomfortable situations as it regards my natural hair because I knew if I didn't, I would hide forever. One of the most important steps to my self-love and self-acceptance journey as it regards my natural hair was really doing the work. And when I say do the work, I mean interrogating the preconceived notions that I had about my hair, the societal constructs about my hair, and realize how I was internalizing those on an individual level. Why I wanted my hair texture to be a certain way. Why I wanted my hair length to be a certain way. Why well, I wanted my edges to lay a certain way. Yes, it's all societal. Yes, it all stems from Eurocentrism and anti-blackness. You have to be ready to do the work. It's academic work, it's introspective work, it's reflective work, it's work. Thankfully, <laughs> there's so much literature that exists about just anti-blackness and Eurocentrism and how it's been perpetuated and portrayed in media, politics, art, literature, in everyday life. There's so much work that has already been done that I highly encourage you to look into to, um, and once you do that work, you'll be more informed not only for yourself, but for other people as well. One of the most important things, you need to follow people who represent you. And if they're not representing you, you need to limit your consumption of them. I just saw a TikTok. Let me go ahead and see if I can find it again. Similar to your body type, girls that remind you of you, girls that remind you that we are real people and we're not. Instagram models that don't have no scars and no and, and no and no arm, big arms and no big stomachs and no stretch marks. Like when you find a girl that really look like you, that's natural. You start to tell yourself more because their name is 
Call Me Honey on TikTok. And in that video, you can hear that they're clearly talking about body type. And once you follow people who represent your own body type, you will start loving yourself more. The same concept is true for your natural hair. You have to follow people who have your hair type whose hair functions like yours. That means as much as you may love the big YouTubers, if the big YouTubers ain't got your hair type, you should not be watching all of their videos. Because again, that goes back to our first point of what expectation are you inadvertently setting for yourself if you're always consuming people with type 3B natural hair? That was something that took me a while to really figure out and really understand but once I realized that, first of all, I'm not obligated to watch anybody, okay? So I really, as much as you may think you have to be super loyal to these people, babes, as a parasocial relationship, they're not gonna miss that follow, okay? They're not gonna miss that subscription. If you need to let certain people go in order to love yourself better, then that's what you have to do. Not just your curl pattern in particular, but maybe it's your porosity, maybe it's your sheen, maybe it's your density. You need realistic expectations of what your hair is gonna do, what your hair is gonna perform like, so that again, you're not building these unrealistic expectations for yourself in your head without even realizing it. So I will tell y'all right now, um, if it's a natural hair girl, she gonna be type four if I'm watching her and that it, it is what it is. And I highly encourage you to do the same. And that's not to say there aren't transferable skills, there aren't things that you can learn from people with other hair types. We know this. If the only people you seem to be drawn to on the internet are people with a hair type that is completely different from yours, that's probably an indication that there's still some work to do on your end of making sure that you can accept you for you. Last two things I wanna point out. One thing I think I did very well in just getting myself to a place of acceptance and love as it regards my natural hair. I did very well with limiting the amount of heat that I use on my natural hair because I did not want to fall back into a trap of wearing straight hair and seeing myself with straight hair. Again, as somebody who came from Relax and Natural, I was kind of over the straight hair phase, to be quite honest with you. If I wanted to wear my hair straight, I would have kept it relaxing, right? I know what my hair looks like straight. I know how I operate straight. But when I went natural, I went natural with the intention of wearing my hair curly and wearing curly styles. And I do think if you're at a place where you're not necessarily fully acceptant of your natural hair, it's good to hold off on heat styling because you really do need to fall in love with those curls. I was very invested in knowing my hair in its curly state. And that, I think that is something that really, really helped me accept my hair for what it was. So the last thing I want to wrap up with when you're talking about learning how to love your natural hair in your natural hair journey, you have to find community. Community is everything to our culture, it's everything to our people, and it's gonna be everything to you in your journey. Whether it's an online community, an in-person community, you have to find those people, those like-minded people who you can exchange ideas with, who you can share your frustrations with, and who you can also give encouragement to. Now again, I know we had conversations about how the natural hair community has evolved over the years and how it has become a place where toxicity is allowed to brew. But y'all, that is not what the natural hair community has always been. And again, as somebody who's been here for a very long time, I'll be the first to tell you that the original blogs, the original forums and threads, the original YouTube comments, y'all, it was a true community. I found a community online at first. And then I was able to foster a community in person. So in college, way back in the day, I was in a natural hair club, a natural hair organization called Strands, uh, stands for Students Transitioning Relaxed and Natural Developing Sisterhood. So when I first came into college, I remember being one of few girls with natural hair. But when I was leaving college, there are very few girls with relaxed hair. And that was something that personally made me very happy and something I think I contributed to in this natural hair organization. Fun fact, if you've been on my page for a while, I mean a good little while, you know that I have posted a couple videos about this group before, about strands, shout out to strands. But strands was one of the ways that I could practice being in community with like-minded people as they regarded my natural hair. Again, I was natural when I came into college. I was very confident natural when I came into college but leaving as a result of being around like-minded people confidence boosted. I'm so passionate about giving people that experience and that's one of the reasons that I started my natural hair channel. Um, it's one of the reasons that I give you how-to videos because if you don't feel confident if you don't know how to do it I want to be the person to show you. 
Now, with that being said, the next video y'all see for me, maybe, well, maybe not the next one, but the next, next one, we gonna have our natural hair out, okay? Because we absolutely do love our natural hair. I am so proud of myself for being a kid and taking the leap and saying that I was going natural and I'm so in love with the hair that grows on my head y'all don't worry you can still have fun you can still grow and experiment and chop it and cut it and color it and bleach it and try new things but when you do that from a place of self-love already it just hits different whatever you have amazing spectacular love it to the fullest because it's everything and i want everybody to feel like that hopefully this video helps you feel like that share some things that you did some actual steps that you took to come to terms with the hair that go rose out of your head and then going from coming to terms with it to then loving it and cherishing it and appreciating it. Share that journey with us in the comment section below because I'm sure there are people who need it and they go get it here, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that subscribe button. Also like this video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.